So here is uh, my update on the build. This is uh, part two of the video. If you haven't seen what I'm doing, it's basically a controller that runs on Dish and allows me to customize the volume of like the main outputs or different apps in my computer. So right now I've 3D printed a simple enclosure. It's um, quite functional in my opinion. It's small. The only problem I have with it is since I have a click function to mute it like this, it kind of uh, slides around. So I've tried it before with like a vertical option, which uh, uh, since the force is applied vertically, it wouldn't slide around, but I don't really like how this looks So I think this is a better design in my opinion and Right now the UI and the device works the same. So I've just updated the code to have uh, Better like structure and some and stuff like that, but also some quality of life upgrades so right now uh, this device is connected to my Wi-Fi, as you've seen before. I'll show you, like this. So, uh, as you can see, the UI now looks a bit better. It was really, like, uh, primitive before, but now it has, like, a, a dark mode, which, if you're using light mode, I don't really get you. So, I love stuff that it's dark mode, and, yeah, so it's like this. And as you can see, the same options as before, so scan networks, upload uh, slider config, this is the config file that allows you to customize this stuff. But also you have a new option, which is Wi-Fi settings. Right now the CSS is kind of messed up for this, but I'll fix that in the future, I don't really have time today. And as you can see, current state is enabled, so you used to have to connect it to Wi-Fi to make sure it uh, actually proceeded to the digital control stuff. Right now, uh, it is set up like this, but if I want, uh, remember this page is the same page that you get when uh, you first set up your uh, device. So it shows it, you connect to the Wi-Fi and you have this page, this exact same page, and I can go into Wi-Fi settings and just disable Wi-Fi. This reboots the device, and as you can see, it rebooted, but it didn't go to any Wi-Fi checks, so this just works like this. But let's say I have it like this, now I have no way to configure it again. So if I want to, like, I don't know, enable Wi-Fi, or if I want to upload some stuff to it, so like if I want to change the sliders, so I've implemented this, if you hold this button for 10 seconds, uh, 10 seconds is quite a long time, Let's show you. Yep, here it is. So you get the page. And just like before, I'll show you. Just a second. So you just visit the IP that is written here. So 192.168.4.1. And you have the page. So you can upload a config file or change the Wi-Fi setting, right now it's disabled. Or if I want to add a Wi-Fi network, I can just scan it. It takes a while since it's uh, going to all the APs. I'll have to blur this stuff, but uh, as you can see, you can just like select one. I'll go to my test one since it's with a default password. And right now it's set up to not connect to any Wi-Fi on boot. But if you type in the password, just a second. Okay, uh, remember this is not my real Wi-Fi, <laughs> it's just a AP that I set up for this. If you connect to it, it automatically, uh, it, now, right now it's testing the connection, it's rebooting since it actually worked, and it set it up Wi-Fi to be true. So it now uses Wi-Fi and it's connected to my guest Wi-Fi. So yeah, this is basically all the functionality I added. I would upload the STL files. Right now, I don't really like the fact that, if you can see this, it's, it needs supports, so it's quite a lot of waste, in my opinion. So this is how it is on the inside. It's a bit of a redness with all these wires, since they're longer, because I don't know if this is gonna be my last prototype. This was my first one and uh, the spacing was different, so I made the cable longer in case I did want to arrange some stuff. Also, right now, this type of connection with the 
USB-C, it's not really permanent. I'm gonna add a female USB-C to the outside. Uh, it's in the mail right now. It's gonna come in like 10 days since it's from China. So I can just plug it in from the outside and not have this ugly cable going in, which is quite a pain to fit inside. But basically you can just, as you, as you saw before, just screws in like this with a couple of screws here. Yeah, this is basically the inside. Nothing much going on, nothing different from the breadboard stuff. So yeah, it's uh, as you as you saw, it's a two-part setup like this. It has a, a face plate and uh, yeah, and a back part. So yeah, uh, as I told you, I'm gonna add a USB-C female here, and it's gonna take a while since it's coming from China. Right now, the hardware used is just some M3 screws for the display, and for the Mm, rotary encoders, there are some, I think, M2 or 2.5 uh, self-tapping screws, and these are M3 self-tapping screws. So yeah, quite a, quite a basic setup. I've also changed the code, so I'll show you on the GitHub page. I'll still have to update README, but it will be changed uh, uh, once the video comes out. But as you can see, by now, if you want to make one yourself, and uh, you might not be using the same uh, ESP that I'm using right now, since my ESP S3 is coming. But I don't, and I want to use that, even though I'm not really sure I'm gonna need the extra um, process power. But who knows? Right now, I'm using a ESP C3 Super Mini, which is a really nifty device. It's really small compared to like a full size ESP. And as you can see, this is like the main uh, code part. And here it's all the pin definitions. So uh, if you have another setup, just change these pin definitions and it will work. Um, this, uh, this option that I did it before, because um, the ESP uh, C3 Super Mini, it's some devices, some batches have a problem with the antenna on board and you have to uh, set the uh, transmitting power for the Wi-Fi to be lower uh, at 8.5 dB or else it doesn't like uh, connect to the Wi-Fi at least uh, it connects to the Wi-Fi sometimes and sometimes it doesn't so if you have the same problem uh, just set this to true and it will work it does um, reduce the range a bit but it shouldn't be really a problem but if you don't have this problem just set this option to false so yeah all the other stuff is the same it's the same, like it's all updated, but it works the same. So yeah, I'll be updating the uh, readme file. Uh, it is all the prototype stuff. So if you want to build this yourself, I will have the STL file on the GitHub. And uh, yeah, it's it does require soldering and it probably won't fit most uh, ESP full size ones. So you will need an ESP32 uh, mini. Uh, I'm using the C3 as I told you, but mm, yeah, it's quite an easy project. It doesn't really involve uh, a lot of complex soldering and the hardware is really inexpensive and it's a good way to practice some solder soldering if you are not really good at it, as I am, I'm not really good at soldering myself. So there probably won't be any updates on this for a while since I'm waiting for parts on the mail and I have some stuff to do. But yeah, I just wanted to update you on the progress. See you on the next video.